Basically, there are 2.4 billion people in the world today without an identity. And what that means is they're legally, they're socially, and they're financially excluded from services that you and I take for granted. And this is something that governments, that aid agencies, that NGOs have never been able to solve. But I'm delighted to say we are solving it right now. And I want to show you then how using digital identity plus blockchain technology can not only help us to advance the sustainable development goals, but also to accelerate their impact. So who is familiar with the SDGs? Quick show of hands. I've completely gone off script. Uh, so the SDGs, in case you don't know what they are, they are 17 goals backed by no less than 193 countries. Uh, they are considered to be, they build upon the success of the Millennium Development Goals. You may have heard a very famous Irish man, I'm a big fan of his, called Bono, talking about the Millennium Development Goals in the past, but they build on top of that. Uh, they're commonly referred to as the Global Goals, um, and they're, they're basically things that we're looking to solve by the year 2030, and we believe that blockchain technology and digital identity can not only accelerate their impact, but also advance them. And what they are is a universal call to action to end poverty, to fight inequalities and injustice, and to tackle climate change. All very lofty, all very big goals, but we have been making an impact. We want people to make an impact, and I feel it's my duty here today to inform those of you who aren't familiar with them what they already are. And I want to show you specifically then how we are using blockchain to link them together and to accelerate the impact. First of all, before I do that, blockchain, hot topic. A lot of people may or may not know what it is. I'll try and demystify it. I'll show you how we have leveraged it to date. And a lot of people think that blockchain is the next internet revolution, and some people think that it's the missing piece of the internet, and I'll tell you why we think that is. So if you think about the internet, what it's done to the movement of video, of voice, and data, think YouTube, think Skype, think WhatsApp, think Snapchat, and your, your phones here today, but the only thing that we haven't really democratized to date is the movement of value. So we're still reliant on people like Bank of Ireland, the middlemen, the financial institutions, and there's nothing wrong with that. But up until 2008, before blockchain came along, before Bitcoin existed, the really the movement of value was, was in the hands of let's say, certain institutions and certain people, but that has changed. Um, and somebody who uh, thinks it's going to make a really big impact, uh, we met with them recently, are the World Economic Forum, and they predict that by the year 2027, 10% of global gross domestic product will be stored in one form or another on blockchain technology. So it's a huge opportunity. It's a really am amazing technology. And another good definition comes from quite a reputable organization, and the key word here being trust before I get to that. But blockchain, um, according to the Bank of England, is a technology that allows people who don't know each other, think about you and me uh, inter interacting here in the audience, I don't know who you are, but if I had blockchain, I can basically ensure that it allows people who don't know each other to trust a shared record of events. And trust is really the key word there. To go back to the universal ambitions that I mentioned with the Sustainable Development Goals, trust is really a foundation for tackling inequality, for promoting, um, uh, promoting equality, etc. Trust is fundamental to everything of those. And if you think about the movement of value, as in money in my pocket, trust really is the fundamental thing behind that. If I have a euro, if I've got a 20 euro note in my hands, you trust that it is of value because people like the European Central Bank say it is. But what does the blockchain look like? So to give you a graphical example, what you have are blocks. They're connected together with a cryptographic chain. And what you do is you store events on the blocks on the chain. And in the case of what we're doing, and in the case of the sustainable development goals, an example of what you can store in the blockchain, and you can effectively store anything, would be international aid, it could be, um, it could be remittances, or it could be healthcare entitlements. They are just some of the things that you can append to the blockchain. And physically what it is, going back to the idea of trust, you have a shared, what's referred to as a ledger, stored on numerous different computers, and they are all transacting with each other, thus removing the need for a third party to validate. So going back to the idea of trust, if everybody can trust the same record of events, which is on the blockchain, we're in a much better position to be able to do things that we couldn't do before. And back to the mission of ATEC, I want to tell you how it happened. It kind of happened by mistake, if I'm being completely honest. 
but we are a mission-driven company, and the mission of the company is to bring social and financial inclusion to the undocumented and the underserved with blockchain technology. And why we're doing it is, uh, basically, every year, $1.1 trillion goes missing because of fraud, corruption, and a lack of transparency. And again, much like identity, it's something that governments have been slow to tackle. Part of the reasons that the SDGs exist, as I mentioned, are to tackle things like corruption. But really, um, we see it as a huge opportunity as well. And pop quiz again, how many SDG goals are there? Anybody tell me? 17, great. And one of them in particular is target six, or goal 16, and that's to promote peace and justice. And not to sound too much like I'm a lecturer in a college, but with the SDGs, what they've done, and I know some of the people involved, they've broken them down into sub-targets. And one of them is target 16.9. And 16.9 relates directly to what we're trying to do at AidTech. And the goal then of Target 16.9 is to bring legal identity to everybody in the world by the year 2030. We believe it's possible with blockchain technology to do it. It's not the only way, but it's certainly one of the answers. And what we do is we use blockchain technology. Um, and what we do is we base digital identity and blockchain technology to enhance transparency. So for example, this digital identity that I spoke about could be in the form of a plastic card, it could be a mobile application. And effectively, what we're doing with the technology is we are taking a real world entitlement that could be aid, that could be remittances, that could be healthcare. And if you look at the funnel here in the middle, think about this as blockchain. And effectively, what we're doing is we're, we're converting a real world entitlement into a digital asset based on cryptography that's being moved around the blockchain from point A to point B to point C and so on. And I like to think of blockchain and I like to think of what we're doing is we're almost like a data logistics company backed up by trust. That's how I would think of it. And if you look at that block there at the bottom right of the screen, um, I'm going to show you then how you can relate that to international aid and a project that we did in Lebanon with Syrian refugees to move information all across the blockchain and to give it complete transparency. And that's the mission, really, to bring transparency to something that was previously opaque and to bring trust into it. And it's not just theory. Um, so what are we really doing out there now today? What are some companies doing to help accelerate the SDGs and to advance the impact? Well, ways in which we've used the technology. And again, it all happened because of my good friend Joe. Uh, Joe ran a marathon back in 2009. He's a bit of a madman. He's here from Dublin. Um, I like to call him Quadzilla because he's got a massive set of quads. But those quads pounded through the Moroccan desert in 2009 for 151 miles. He was actually chased by a camel at one stage because he collapsed in the middle of the race. He got back up and he had to stay in front of a Bedouin hauling a camel or else he had to basically get out of the race. But to make it more relevant, Joe, the madman that he is, he ran the 151 miles, he raised $122,000. About six months later, he contacted the charity to whom he, whom he gave all the money, and they weren't able to give him an answer as to where the actual money was spent. So anyway, we weren't humanitarians by default then. We've since become humanitarians. But almost by chance, we realized that something like international aid, going back to the figure that I mentioned of $1.1 trillion going missing, blockchain was a way that we could bring transparency to that. Joe was working with the guy here in Dublin to help him correct a thesis uh, that he was doing in the University of Nicosia in Cyprus. And if you recall what happened in Nicosia in 2012, they had a big bail-in, and Bitcoin, blockchain technology, became very popular. Hence, he decided to do it there. But somebody helping him correct his thesis here in Dublin and bind it and everything runs a charity where people cycle all the way from Dublin to Chernobyl to help children who suffered from the radioactive disaster. And he said to Joe, you know what? The real innovation with blockchain, this was uh, 2012, is transparency. It's bringing transparency to something that was previously opaque. And at the time, when Bitcoin first came out, when blockchain, people were using it to be anonymous. And some people still do, but we see the real innovation. We think blockchain is an exponential technology that can promote transparency. And an example of a project that we ran, in, um, it was in Lebanon. This was supported by our good friends here in Dublin uh, with the Irish Red Cross. We worked with an amazing guy called Danny Curran. Hat tip to Danny if you're watching the live stream or you watch this back. But Danny is the head of fundraising, and Danny had the vision uh, to see that something like blockchain could be used to bring transparency to the movement of international aid. 
So we ran a project with them on the ground in Lebanon. And again, I'll show you what it looks like right now, but in line with my talk and in line with what I'm saying about the SDGs, about blockchain, about identity, how it can be used, the specific target that we went for here, again, is target 16.9, and that's to bring legal identity to everybody in the world by the year 2030. And the way we think of it in our company is that our technology roadmap, our business roadmap, is completely driven by the sustainable development goals. We believe it's an untapped business opportunity and that everybody should be aware of it and that you can make an impact and you can make money at the same time. That's a message that we're trying to drive home to everybody we meet. We believe they're not mutually exclusive. And I'll show you what it looked like then. So here is Gabriel Pictet, I'm a good friend of ours. He's from the International Federation of the Red Cross based in Geneva. And what you see here is Gabriel creating and issuing digital identities on our platform. And in a groundbreaking project that I spoke about in Lebanon in 2015, these same identities were used by Syrian refugees from the Akar refugee camp to obtain goods from a supermarket in a completely transparent manner, which had never been done before. The first time that blockchain technology was ever used to deliver international aid. And we proved, with the help of the Red Cross, with the help of the people on the ground, with the refugees, while maintaining their dignity, true identity, that you can, you will, and we will keep doing it, bring identity to the unidentified, in line with target 16.9. That kind of rhymes as well. I uh, didn't mean that to happen beforehand. Um, and what it can look like then is with a donation app that we have like this, you can make a donation to an appeal, it can be to an individual, it can be to a group, but not only with blockchain can you tell what happened to your donation, you can trace where your money was spent, by whom, for what, and how much. So if you think about a lot of the scandals that are quite topical at the moment, and I don't think we should pretend they don't exist in this space, with blockchain technology, we can bring transparency to the movement of things like international aid. And it's all only possible because of blockchain technology. And if you go back to the idea of trust, how do I know that's correct? The shared, immutable, permanent ledger that you cannot overwrite. And another project that we're doing um, is, in the, is with our partners, the United Nations Development Program. It's in Serbia, um, it's related to remittances. And specifically here, what we're focused on is target 10.c. And target 10.c is to bring the cost of remittances down to below 3% by the year 2030 and to eliminate remittance corridors of greater than 5%. To give you a bit of context, to throw a bit of business at you, it is important. Remittances is a $452 billion global market. According to the World Bank in 2016, the global average fee for sending a remittance for across a border was 7.32%. And ironically, it's in the developing countries where remittance fees are higher. One of my friends from the UNDP is in Somalia right now. I spoke to her this morning before I did the talk, and she was telling me even there that 90% of the economy in Somalia is based on remittances, and the fees are typically 20% and higher. So if you think about that, if you've got hundreds of millions or billions, in the case of Serbia, it's four billion flowing in each year, and if you've got uh, money transmitters taking every 20 bucks out of every 100 that comes in, that's a lot of money that could have circulated in the economy and could have helped us accelerate, advance, and increase the impact of the Sustainable Development Goals. So specifically there, what we're doing, we're partnering with another small little Irish company called Stripe, two brothers that you may know, uh, Patrick and John, and they're helping us process the payments there in line with that goal, target 10.c. And that's us on the ground over there in Serbia with the UN, uh, some of our team. And finally, this is the one that I'm really most excited about, where I think blockchain can make the biggest impact. And the goal is specifically, it's to promote good, um, good health and well-being. And something we're doing on the ground today in Tanzania with a partner in Holland is we're using blockchain technology to distribute healthcare entitlements to pregnant women in a completely transparent manner using the idea of what's called a smart contract. So that means as a pregnant woman, every milestone that you go through or you should go through in the journey of pregnancy, we have a record if that happened or not. So for example, if you're a pregnant woman, you can get an alert to your mobile phone. You need to go to the clinic today for your prenatal checkup. You need to do your postnatal checkup. You need to get your folic acid. And that means that the people who fund all of these projects, who are typically governments, uh, like Irish Aid, uh, private companies, 
we can give them a fairly certain degree of assuredness that something did happen. And really, the goal here for this one, and it's a big lofty one, it's the one we want to hit the most, is to end preventable deaths of newborns and to reduce inf uh, neonatal mortality. And again, that's in line with target 3.2. That's the one I'm most excited about. So I hope you learned a little bit about the Sustainable Development Goals, if you haven't already. I hope you can see how you can take inspiration from them, like we have, and that with the advent of exponential technologies like blockchain, like artificial intelligence, like machine learning, we can really harness these and we can use them as a positive um, driver for change in the world, and again, making it all sustainable for everybody. So thank you for your attention. Hope you enjoyed it. 16 minutes, I think it was. Hope you uh, didn't keep you too long. An absolute pleasure, uh, and thanks again to the committee for being here. Really enjoyed it. So that's, that's me.